welcome back to why in the morning if it's tuesday it's entrepreneurship tuesday at y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at michelle ashira is where you can find me across all my social in this particular session we dive into an interview that looks at nutrition consulting the whole as the professional aspect of it the business aspect of it this is a conversation you want to stick around for so all right so there's a quote I want, I want to quote uh, Dr. Nancy Molika, and she says that to eat is necessity, but to eat intelligently is an art. All right, so stick in for this conversation because, um, oh my, you want to know way much more when it comes to nutrition. And in studio, I am joined by Jessica Wenjiko. She is the co-founder of Malkia Nutrition. And listen... She's a licensed nutritionist. Thank you very much, Jessica, for creating time for me. That I, I wish you would have just tagged, <laughs> high fived, but Corona is real. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So how are you doing? I'm fine. Very Happy well. New it's Month. You too. It's All right. A great month. For someone who is watching mm -hmm. us for and they've had me throw in the you know your title as yeah. a licensed nutritionist. Yeah. So what what does it entail being a nutritionist? Well, being a nutritionist is where you get the knowledge about the food we eat, how it affects our, our bodies, as well as all the, you know, all the processing and the uh, functions that go in as you take the body, uh, the food into the body and how it's digested and all that. Oh. But we also learn how it's uh, produced, um, a little bit of food science. Yeah, I know that. Uh, so for most of us, yeah. we want to live healthy, yeah. okay? We want to live healthy. We want to do everything the right way because we care about our bodies. Sure. Now the problem is, um, we, what we are actually implementing is what we have studied in school, mm. which is proteins, carbohydrates, yeah. Yeah. vitamins. Yeah. And at times it doesn't just follow that, that, <laughs> <laughs> that meal plan. Yeah. So what is the proper meal plan looking like? Okay, um, a balanced diet, of course, will have all those portions you mentioned mm -hmm. to have proteins and carbohydrates and vitamins. Those are the vegetables, but it depends. For a healthy uh, person, you have like half of your plate will be uh, carbohydrates, quarter will be proteins, and the rest should be like vegetables or a fruit. Then you need to have all through the day, like for those 24 hours, have different servings of uh, fruits. You can have a fruit in the morning or at four or at ten or at four, such that at the end of the day you will have eight, seven to eight servings of fruit and vegetables. Ah, right. yeah. In this, uh, when it comes to the nutrition journey on a personal level, yeah, I tell because there's a difference between wellness mm -hmm. and nutrition. True. How important is it to combine both of them? And uh, um, yes, how important is it to combine okay. both of them if I move to the mental space? All right. So wellness is, it encompasses uh, food and nutrition. It also looks into mental health uh, wellness, but it also looks at exercising and how you carry yourself. Uh, so wellness is more of a, like a basket of different aspects. Mm -hmm. But nutrition is more about food, what you eat, how do you eat it, what time do you eat it, how often do you eat, what is it composed of, what is the food composed of. So nutrition is more specific, well, as wellness is, uh, it encompasses a lot more. All right. So, yeah. Okay. When you speak about uh, the mental awareness, because mm -hmm. when it comes to this whole aspect, the yeah. wellness journey, mm -hmm. it all starts from the mindset. Okay. And we have people who actually, when they are going through something, maybe depression, mm -hmm. they're just being stressed, they had a long day. How can you sh shift the mentality aspect? Because there are people who overindulge yeah. when they are stressed. Yeah. They just want to get in and. <laughs> so, have it all. Then we have the guys who actually deprive themselves from eating. So when uh, we come to Malkia, so how do you change that sort of mentality okay. of health? So mental health, wellness is actually one of the aspects we also deal with. We have a psychologist on board whom we work with because we realize problems with food stem from like um, your psychological aspect. Like did you have a problem with food when you were young? Maybe you are forced to eat a particular food, now you don't want to eat it when you are grown, or you are deprived of a particular food item when you are young, now you overindulge when you are old. Um, there's also the aspect of stress and depression, so we have to solve that problem fast, mm -hmm. and then now we can deal with the food that you are eating, because 
I can counsel someone who is depressed and just look at uh, their meal plan and give them a meal plan, but they won't follow it if they have um, underlying mental illness uh, at, at the back of, uh, you know, like they have something else that is re leading up to the problems with their food. For example, uh, if you have someone who doesn't eat, uh, someone who's anorexic, they don't eat because they have an issue that they're dealing with. So we have to solve that issue first, then now we can address the problem in the food. So it goes back to your childhood days. True, true, yeah. And that brings me back to <laughs> this particular question okay. that we have seen most of us back from our home. So in, the, in an African home setup yeah. whereby our parents tell you, no, sit down, Maliza Ichakula, you, you are not <laughs> going anywhere. So is yeah. that from a parent perspective, mm. just speaking to parents, mm. how wrong is that? It's strong because mm -hmm. if the child is done, let them be done. <laughs> Don't force them to overeat or overindulge because it might, you know, like roll up to their adulthood or adolescence, where now if you serve them a huge plate of food, and then they remember that voice at the back of my, their head, mommy wants me to eat everything. And I think it's actually subconsciously Yeah, it's reacting. subconsciously, because you, you have been trained like that. Mm -hmm. You have been trained to eat everything on your plate. So even if it's too much for you, you'll still eat it. So uh, for parents, probably, if serve the right portion for your child, and if they are full, let them be. Because I know one thing, a child would starve themselves. They will always eat. Okay. Yeah. So take us, take us through, Jessica, where did the passion uh, start or all began for you uh, when it comes to the nutrition uh, market? And how did you get into this industry? Um, I think subconsciously it was because of my mom. <laughs> she was very strict on what we ate at home. Um, and also she made like her dishes really well. So that was subconsciously, but I joined, when I joined uh, university, and I chose nutrition, and then I found it interesting, you know, to understand food, to understand how it's grown, where it's from, how it's processed, and why you love a particular food over another. So that's um, from my background, from my mom, it has sparked the aspect of wanting to understand food and nutrition. Then the reason now why I went into consultancy, um, I think it was more because of my family, like my uncles and my aunties, most of them are um, having lifestyle diseases from obesity, um, kidney problems, um, hypertension. So I wanted to have an impact. If only I can start with my family, then reach out to more people in the community, I felt like I could have an impact. All right, and how, for how long has Malkia Nutrition been running? Um, we've been running since uh, May 2019. Okay. So we were active, up uh, more active physically up to the lockdown and then now we've been more online but we still operate at our offices in Westlands. Well, and how was the reception <coughs> into the market uh, when you guys you know started? Um, initially it was a bit tough because uh, some people okay the target market that we had they didn't realize that you should pay for nutrition consultancy with all that we can just talk and I'll pick tips and that's it. But nutrition... They don't realize it's a business <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah, so the business aspect where you tell someone um, we'll consult for one hour and you have to pay, mm -hmm. it was a bit um, hard to pass across. But now when you come to someone who is already having an issue, like a lifestyle problem, they are more willing to listen to you. They understand the value. Yes, yeah. they understand the value of what you're saying and how you're helping them to change their dietary habits work with them to lifestyle coaching and transforming their habits. So those are some more receptive. But for young people whom we want them to learn about prevention, it's a bit hard to get the message across. Okay, because they feel like, you know, we got yeah, all the time. I'm okay, yeah. <laughs> and before, you know, before you know it, you are at 35, you are... 40. Be, yeah, 40 and you're having... Then you have kids mm -hmm. and you're already struggling with your own lifestyle diseases. Yes. So. And speak to us about, because uh, I... Okay, I read somewhere mm -hmm. and uh, they, they speak about the fact that you have so much control of your body mm -hmm. uh, before the age of uh, 40. And how true is that? It's true because before you hit 40 or even before you hit 30, you're okay. more physically active. Mm -hmm. You can be, you know, like your metabolism is higher, but with age it dips. Metabolism means uh, like the rate at which food is being processed and used in the body. So when your metabolism uh, dips, uh, changes, or slows down, and now you're more physically inactive, it means more of the food you consume is stored in your body. So now those underlying problems or conditions will start coming up. You might find your blood pressure has gone up, 
your blood sugar is a little bit on the you know on the high side and you have start you start developing those problems now at the age of 40 that's why you find uh, most lifestyle diseases are discovered towards that age but they could have been prevented from uh, adolescent and um, like a young adult yeah so as Malki I mean we're in that space where we want people to know about prevention before we start managing lifestyle diseases that are most of them are preventable actually most mm. of them are preventable okay so briefly Jessica take us through what uh, are the services that Malkia Nutrition offers okay so Malkia Nutrition offers a nutrition assessment this is where we'll come a client will come and we'll um, either take their weight and height and uh, try to you know get their BMI body mass index try to address um, any issues that they might have like assessment and then we also have um, uh, screening campaigns. This is where we go out to the community and uh, give people the services for free or for a small fee. We screen them for uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, of course their weight and height, that is their, if they are obese. We also have mental wellness, as I had mentioned, lifestyle coaching, where you work with a psychologist who helps you now to deal with your issues and uh, probably like if uh, mental Ill, uh, wellness is what is causing your food problems, we get to address that. So yeah, that's. Right. Uh, Do you feel like there's, uh, there can never be change when it comes to someone who is embarking on a journey of nutrition when their mental space is not changed? Yeah, it, it's hard. It's mm -hmm. hard because you'll come and talk, and we'll, you'll pay for the one hour, but then when you go back home and you're facing the same issues. You will go to the fridge, get what is there, binge it, and then next week when you come and uh, I assess you and I find we haven't moved, <laughs> we are still at the same point. And if you're honest with me and you tell me, but they, I didn't follow the meal plan, mm -hmm. so we realize we won't make progress until we sort you out your um, mental health issues. All right. Yeah. Being there, we're still in the face of the new year, yeah. uh, we just welcome February here. Yeah. <laughs> so people have their goals, mm -hmm. body goals and yeah. everything. They're back to the gym, just yeah. trying to get the summer body. Mm -hmm. So take us through uh, the process of losing weight, right? Mm -hmm. We have guys who are embarking on keto fasting, yeah. intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. How effective are these uh, uh, fasting programs? Okay, for someone who's embarking on a, on a weight loss journey, they yes. should be keen on what they're eating. Mm -hmm. Don't just jump onto a, a diet program without like researching on it, knowing what you will eat and what you will not eat. Because if you go like on a keto diet and you're just having lots of proteins, and maybe you still need energy, even if this protein at some point will be digested to release energy in the body, you still need some carbs. But if you go on a diet that you haven't researched well on mm -hmm. and which you're not disciplined enough to be consistent on, you drop it at that point and then of course it won't work. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem, what happens is now people come in to a nutritionist and they say, these things don't work. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because they don't, they're not consistent. You've made a, a goal in January Two weeks in, you have dropped it. You have picked another diet another plan. To, uh, like two weeks in, you have dropped it. So, those if it's not consistent, if it's not guided, it might not work. So that's where uh, our services come in. We help even if you're on a keto diet, but we will guide you to know which foods to eat, when to eat them, and why you're doing it. Because if you just go into something without the knowledge, you're probably gonna drop it at some point. Yeah. So the why is important. <clears throat> yeah. <the> why. <laughs> Always begin with the why. Oh, Always. I Okay, so what if I decide to go all the way fasting? I give myself, like, as you mentioned earlier before you started mm -hmm. this conversation yeah. on the air, yeah. you said about 21 days. Mm -hmm. Is water fasting effective? If I choose 21 days, I don't know, 40 days, mm -hmm. is it effective? Um, if you're consistent for 21 days, it mm -hmm. will be effective. Because at that point, the body will have adjusted and the metabolism will have, um, the patterns will have adjusted, such that when you fast, your body breaks down what is already stored in your body. And then now when you eat, it is like, um, nothing much will be stored. But if you do it for two, you fast um, for eight hours, like during the day, then when you're going back home, you are uh, like, ah, I've seen a samosa <laughs> there, I've seen an egg there, I need to grab an ice, and funny, ice cream. And that is the moment where you see all this thing. True, true, and they're so appealing, because you're hungry. Mm -hmm. But your body needs to form a pattern, which uh, begins at 
probably 14 days, 21 days, and then now if you're consistent at 40 days, now that probably becomes like a lifestyle. All right. Yeah. Let's speak about discipline. Because <laughs> if there's no discipline, you're not achieving anything true, in, true. This, in this journey. True. So how does, uh, you know, your, any of your program mm -hmm. at Malkia Nutrition uh, deal with just ensuring that your clients follow up on a particular program, just be dis discipline mm -hmm. and follow through? So what we do is follow up. So if someone is on a meal plan that, of course, I have the copy. So if I give them the meal plan, I will either um, have them send me photos of what they are eating uh, to see that they are, you know, to keep you up on your toes. Uh, if we don't do that, we may, I'll call you like after two days and see how you're doing. Is it tough? Did you feel faint during the day? Because you just, uh, maybe reduce the portion of carbohydrates you are having. So we do that follow up to ensure someone is consistent. Then you also have the in-person meetings probably like after two weeks, if you're a meal plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we meet up after two weeks, we uh, observe the changes, the metrics, if they have changed your weight, we take measurements maybe of your waist circumference, so that you can have those metrics to track the progress. What if I cheat? You can't cheat uh, with, like, numbers. Okay. <laughs> your weight can't cheat. You can tell me, but then in a quarter, mm -hmm. I'm following this consistently. Mm -hmm. But when you come to the office and you take mm -hmm. some measurements, and I can tell, um... You probably haven't been doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that there's no way you can you can't cheat. You can cheat yourself, but you can't cheat the numbers. Yeah, and also you, you're doing zero work. Yeah, you're doing zero work. Mm -hmm. You'll be paying for um, something that you're not implementing. All right. So for the uh, for for the people who love coffee, how much caffeine is too much caffeine? <laughs> I've had friends who take like four to eight cups of coffee mm -hmm. a day. That's basically too much. Maybe two mm -hmm. cups of coffee. That's uh, like the recommended or the, mm -hmm. there are ranges for every nutrient that you consume. So that could be the recommended um, daily intake for coffee. But if we do four, six, ten, those are too much. All right. Yeah. When it comes to just uh, breaking into the market space, whereby mm -hmm. we have so many other nutrition companies, yeah. mm -hmm. so and the, comp the competition is there. What is your niche in the market space? We're targeting, um, okay, our niche is like the people we're targeting, we're targeting working class people. So these are people who are still, they're able to pay for our services, but they also need the knowledge because they have just, um, they are like maybe from 25 to, to 35 or 40. So they need the knowledge to know what meals do I prepare for myself? What do, meals do I prepare for my family? If they're already having a, like a young family. So that's our, uh, our target. Mm. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to the marketing strategy, mm -hmm. as per when you started and right now, so how does it look like when it comes to marketing strategy? So when you started, as I mentioned, I started with my family because yes. I, I realized the immediate need, mm -hmm. but we realized we need to go beyond. So we went on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and tried to create awareness social of who media. we are. Yes, okay. uh, social media to create awareness of who we are. For example, for the event we did last year, we had to create a lot of posts and a lot of awareness so that people come for the screening, which was a free screening. But people, if people don't know about it, they, would, they won't come. So the free screening had to be uh, like broadcasted on social media platforms. And also now platforms like this also helped us to get the word out. Okay. Yeah. What is the conversation you're not having about sugar and sugar intake? <laughs> sugar, okay, people, people think of sugar like what you put in your cup or... <laughs> Uh, yeah, basically like the, the sugar that you find on your table, but every food, every food type has sugar. You find sugar in cake, you find sugar in bread, you find sugar even in arrow roots. They still have carbohydrates that can be processed to a form of sugar. So sugar intake should be limited. That not, that's not just what you put in your cup, but overall, like all the carbohydrates you're having, if you want to limit sugar intake, you have to limit all the carbs that you're having. So people should know that it's not that just that teaspoon you're adding to your cup of tea, but it's the overall intake of carbohydrates that you're having in a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I say reduce sugar intake, which I can use because it's more of what people know, I mean reduce your carbohydrates intake overall. Okay, mm -hmm. so it is true that carbs actually uh, play a role when it comes to adding extra weight. weight. Yeah, yeah, they play a big role. Okay. Yeah. So another question that we have here mm -hmm. uh, from one of our viewers, yeah. uh, she's called Nancy from Karatina. She's asking, what is wrong with drinking water while eating? Am I supposed oh. to drink water while eating? How is, or should I drink water first or 
after. Like at the same time? Yeah. Uh, okay, water should be drunk like 30 minutes before or 30 minutes after. Um, the reason being, um, you might find that as you eat the food, some of the like vitamins, most of them are, some of them, not most of them, are water soluble. So those ones will be digested even in your mouth before you, you consume them, you di before you, like, they reach the stomach. So when you're taking your food with water, you're like, can I say watering down <laughs> the food? Like you're diluting some of the nutrients in the food. Okay. And then the digestion process in your stomach will be a bit disrupted. So mm -hmm. maybe 30 minutes before, take some water or 30 minutes after that the food can be, you know, you give a, a space between water intake and food intake. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, that's the reason, Nancy, now you know. Okay, <laughs> let's look at fruits. Uh -huh. What is the right time to have your fruits? Is it after, is it before? Um, well, the, the Kenyan way is like, you know, you see at events, people have them all together. You have your mchele, watermelon there, pineapple, but basically you should also separate them. You know, like, um, have them probably at 10 and then your lunch in two hours time okay. such that these fruits the the vitamins and minerals in them will be have will have been absorbed before the food comes oh, why so it's before yes okay. so how okay I, I i see it in events and um <laughs> you can't tell everyone but you know this should be served probably before the people as like the people are coming in serve the fruits mm -hmm. then have the food afterwards mm -hmm. yeah all right, uh, let's go back to the business aspect mm -hmm. of Malkia Nutrition and, and take us through your, how do you, the monetary uh, uh, value aspect, aspect of it also on how you actually uh, monetize. Oh, so when you have a consultation, you pay for it. Okay. Um, and, you know, uh, we have some products that we sell alongside the consultancy services. So those ones also bring in uh, income um, to our business. And we are moving also to the food production space, whereby we'll have products like chia seeds and uh, ground nuts on sale. But that's still um, in the near future. Mm -hmm. For now, we make money through the consultancy because you pay for every session and also the products that we sell alongside. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And also, let's look at the aspect, the financial <coughs> aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so far since you guys started in 2019 till now yeah. uh, do you guys regret it and how has the uh, financial uh, uh, books been looking like okay. is it a space whereby you can actually make money yeah it's a space where you can make money because um you realize many people now are realizing especially after the covid pandemic oh, yeah, people true. are a bit more health conscious they want to know hey uh, i've been like this uh, i've had like COVID is affecting more pe people who have like life pre-existing conditions are affected more than those who are healthy. So there's something I need to calibrate. So right now people are more perceptive to pay for nutritional uh, services, which can, it was a, like a blessing in disguise during the COVID period because you find uh, now people are picking up nutrition consultancy services more. So no, we don't regret it. Okay. <laughs> and we're gonna continue with the services because we are passionate about it and also we are making money as we do it. All right. Yeah. And you're in a business you know you're in a business space whereby you interact quite so much with uh, uh, you know your clients yeah. and communication skills is quite very important so how do you guys ensure that uh, also your employees are well equipped in ensuring that there is a rapport between the clients and and now the profession, the, pro, the profession that is, the nutritionist. Okay, so there's a way you can tell someone um, something is not good for them mm -hmm. in a polite way. Mm -hmm. You can just tell someone, hey, you're dying. You'll tell them, uh, if you don't watch this, it might lead to, to this outcome. So knowing how to word the message that you're passing across to a client is important for us because we don't want to scare away people, but we also don't want to lie because some of these conditions are life-threatening. So if you don't tell a client that they need to change, they will not change. So mm -hmm. what we teach, uh, or what we embrace as, a, as an organization is like communicating, can I say kindly, mm -hmm. to the client, but making sure you pass the message across. Don't be too nice such that they don't take it seriously, but make sure you pass the message in a way that uh, they understand, but they will also feel like comforted in knowing um, I have a problem, but I can solve it, or we can solve it together. All right. As mm. we 
as you look at before you look at uh, the couple of achievements uh, mm -hmm. since you guys started let's talk about the challenges that you faced mm -hmm. in the in the business okay um i think the major challenge we faced like last year was transitioning because consultancy is one-on-one -on -one. it's face to face but now clients are a bit afraid to travel to come out okay especially with the lockdown there was limited um, people outside and traveling and all that so we had to do it virtually but there is an aspect you can't achieve when it's on a screen because someone can lie to me on a screen and tell me because um, we take like uh, history of your diet maybe for two days the last two days they can tell me oh, I had you know you can tell me the good things I had ugali and some veggies whereas you had maybe a few pieces of cake and ice cream and whatnot so it's it was not easy to have that human connection virtually. Uh, so that was the main challenge. Also, the, the, client, the working clients reduced, of course, because we weren't at the office for a few months. Um, so those were, it affected also our finances okay. at that point, but we are recovering. Well, and what are the measures that you guys are taking to scale up your business in uh, this new year? All right, for this new year, we want to do uh, of course, we are still strong on social media. Okay. We also want to plan another uh, screening campaign, probably maybe people in the community so that they can know that we are here for them uh, to help them with this, creating awareness, uh, knowledge dissemination. Uh, we are planning on that because we find when it's a free event, you find clients now come for a, like a second session or a first consultancy session after the screening, so we're doing that and also being strong on social media. Okay, yeah. let's look at uh, major, uh, major achievement that you made since you guys started off and looking back you'll be like, yeah, I don't regret, <laughs> I don't regret it going all, you know, private practice. Yeah, private practice is, uh, it's interesting, but one of the major achievements was uh, holding the public, uh, public screening campaign at the University of Nairobi Kabete campus last year in uh, in March, so that we attracted almost a thousand people. It set us it set us on the trajectory for like having many clients. Mm -hmm. um, we've also had several uh, you know like online uh, webinars, which we also take pride in that. So, and the the stream the flow of customers has been kind of steady since then. All right. Yeah. As we wind up, give us three tips, <laughs> three nutritional tips that are going to help us when it comes to our meal plan. Okay. One. As we live healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Always have veggies on your plate. Don't okay. just have ugali nyama and that's it. And what Try about the flavors we can put to, you know, compare? Co oh, the spices. Yes. Have, if you can have natural spices, uh -huh. that's good. Like you, you can get the ginger, the, the, you know, the, the ginger itself and grate it for your flavor or the garlic. Add those natural spices to your food. Okay. Avoid the processed ones. Right. There's something about processed food that uh, uh, we want to people to get off processed foods. Um, so one, yeah, have veggies. <laughs> Avoid <laughs> processed foods. And in a day, take a fruit here and there, you know, mm -hmm. take a fruit. Maybe at break time, instead of going for a cake, go for a banana, go for an orange. So, so yeah, those are the three tips I can say. Veggies, uh, natural spices. Natural spices and, and the fruit. Take a fruit, yeah. Take a fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, before. Um, yeah, before you eat, before you eat. So this is at snack time. So okay. in a day you can have two or three snacks. Mm -hmm. That you mean at the end of the day, I'll be a happy person if you tell me I had three bananas today. Oh, why? Wow. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. So thank you very much, Jessica. And uh, okay. how can guys find you on social media? Uh, on all social media platforms, yeah, yes. at Malkia Nutrition. Um, on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and even LinkedIn. And also mm -hmm. our website at Malkia okay. Nutrition. Malkia Nutrition. Yes. As simple as that. As simple as that. Thank you very much, Jessica, for creating uh, time for Thank you that. for having me. Having this Michelle. conversation around nutrition. I'm glad to be here. All right. It's been a good time. Okay, we'll see you to the next time around and discuss way more when it comes to matters pertaining nutrition. Thank you so much, Michelle. All right, that is Jessica Wanjiro, the co-founder of Malkia Nutrition, and she's also a licensed nutritionist. Make sure you follow them across all the social
social media handles that is Balkia Nutrition to get more, much more when it comes to matters pertaining nutrition. So make sure you don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with so much more right here on Why in the Morning at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. So make sure you don't touch that dial. We'll be right back.